Hello there, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Nikon, and in this video we're going to take a look at how you can configure the data for batch shooting. And it's best that before you view this video, you check out a regular batch shooting tutorial video which gives you the overall concept behind batch shooting and how to use it. And in this video we're going to get into much more detail about bringing that data into Control My Nikon so you can embed it in your file and folder names and the IPTC data fields on your images. So we have Control My Nikon running, but I'm not connected to the camera, and you don't need to be connected to the camera to use the data import functions. So let's go over to the Batch tab, and you can access that by going to Workflows, Batch. And as you may recall from our previous video here, this is where we type in the Batch ID, and it brings back this data. So how do we get this data into Control My Nikon? What we need to do first is go down to this button here, the source button. This is the data source. We'll click on it, and it brings up this window here. Now on the first tab here, we have these two selectors here, external and internal. Currently I have it set to external, which means that it's going to access the data from an external database. Whenever I type in a number here as the batch ID, it's going to go to an external database to access it. So I type in 2, and it accessed this record right here. And this is off of an ODBC database connection. If you're unfamiliar with ODBC data connections, it's best to contact your database administrator, and they'll set one up for you. So this is one way to get data. You just go out and query another database. You don't even have to import data into Control My Nikon. And this ODBC database can be a Microsoft SQL Server database, which in this case is what we have, or an Oracle database, or maybe even an Access database. And we'll take a look in a moment how we set this up. Now the other option is internal. So this queries data that we have imported into Control My Nikon. So externals for non-imported data, internals for imported data. And when you install Control My Nikon, it comes with a set of test data. It has a job of SCH 078, and there's one job in the system. So this job is really identifying a group of data. And if in your financial systems or your record keeping systems, you assign an identifier to represent the group of data that you're going to work with, you could just use that here. So when we look here, we only have one job. We can create new jobs, we can delete a job. And this is the data that's in this test job. You see job is the same for all of it, of course, but there's different batch IDs. Now the combination of job and batch ID is unique in Control My Nikon. Control My Nikon has an internal database. When you import it, it just sits in that database. But this number and this combined are unique. If you try to import later on another record of data with SCH 078 as a job and a batch ID of 1, it will give an error saying it can't import it. Now instead of typing in the number here to access the data, such as number 4, you could go here and just double click on it and it does the same thing for you. So if I want number 9, just double click and it brings it up. So you might take this batch data source and maybe move this to another monitor. And it might save you a bit of typing here for the batch ID. But in the data, you can see there's always a job, batch ID, BD1, all the way through to BD9. BD1 to BD9 can be blank, though. You could have a data record that's only job and batch ID, and that's all you need. Really depends how much data you have and how much you want to embed. You can edit a record here as well. So you can change it, click on Save or you can delete an individual record, or add it, or refresh it, or cancel any changes you just made to a record. Normally, you would do all your data editing and creation outside of Control My Icon, and this is really intended to maybe fix up a piece of data that you notice at the last minute after you imported it, and you don't have time to re-import it again. 
you could fix it here. Now when dealing with the database, we also have the SQL monitor. And this will show any communication between Control Mine Icon and the database, whether it's the local database or the external database. So here when I switch to external, here's the query that was sent to this ODBC connection. And when back internal, here is the command that was sent to the local Control Mine Icon database. And the local Control Mine Icon database is an unencrypted Firebird database. So if you import a bunch of data here, and maybe it's sensitive data, Control Mine Icons is not going to hide that data really from anybody. Data that you query from an external database that is not imported in Control Mine Icon is not stored in Control Mine Icon at all other than it may be embedded in the IPTC and file and folder names. Okay, back to the internal database. Now when we have data like this, we can print barcodes. So if you have a barcode scanner, this is real handy. So we have four different barcode reports. We have a one column report. So here's your barcode. And the barcode looks very small here because the number is small. When you have a large number, the barcode itself gets much physically larger. And here's the data. If you had more data, such as up to BD9, it would appear under here. So before you go on your shoot, you could print these out, take them with you. So with your barcode scanner, you could just scan this piece of paper. Let's take a look at our other barcode reports. A two column report. And sometimes you might want to print this one and uh, just print these out and you might hand these to people. Three column. Not enough data yet to wrap to the third column. And you could zoom in and out. You could print these. And you can also save it as a PDF. So if you wanted to generate the barcodes and then send it to someone, maybe via email and have them print it out, you could do it with this PDF. And there's four per page. I'm going to print this one out. Now you can also print out your data without barcodes. So as you take shots, you might take a pen and draw a line through this or something so you can show that you've completed this task. Okay, I have it printed out and I have configured a barcode scanner in the preferences menu. And we're going to try scanning this and you'll see that by scanning it, the batch ID will automatically be entered and the data will be selected. So the actual barcode is the batch ID. Okay, let's try importing some data from a text file. So let's just keep it on internal. Then click on the internal tab. You can see we have two tabs here. One's for importing from a text file. The other one's importing from another ODBC database. So let's click on open file and select this one first, batch data example one dot CSV. This comes with Control Man Icon. It's just a little bit of test data. And it's located in the same folder in which Control Man Icon is installed. And there's our data. I'm just going to click on the help file here for a moment. Let's scroll down. And it describes these two test files here. CSV import example one with this data, which we just saw tells you where to find the file. And there's a second data file as well we'll look at. The difference really is the first file we're going to look at has comma delimited. Second one has these vertical bars. I prefer vertical bars because they're rarely found in data. 
and so they make a good delimiter. Commas can be a little bit more common, so if you have a product name that has a comma in it, it's going to mess things up. So in that case, you'll need to use bars for a delimiter. And using double quotes around here won't help you if you have commas. So looking at this data here, we have one field, then a comma, another field, comma, another field, comma, and so on. Now we need to specify the delimiter, and here by default it's this vertical bar, so instead I'm going to put a comma. And now I'll click on validate. Now validate just looked at this data, looked for its delimiters, and it'll let you know if it found any problems with this data. It'll show you here. So now it tells us to post. We haven't entered a job yet, but when you click on post, it'll prompt you for it. So let's type it in. So we'll just call this drinks. And if you look at the log here, it shows all the commands where it's inserting the data into the Control My Icon database. Now once it says this at the end, success and import complete, you know the data has been imported. So if we go back to setup, you can see the job is being switched to drinks and here is the data. Now you'll see that for text data, we did not have to provide data for these other data fields like BD8 and BD9. Control My Icon will see that you don't have any data for it, it'll just put blanks in there instead. So now we have two jobs, drinks and SCH078. This is the original one. So you can flip between them. When you're on this job and we type in the number two, we get this data here. But if we switch to drinks and we type in a number here, and there's the batch ID one, two, three, four, five, now we get this data. And if we were to capture an image, this data would be embedded into it. Now let's take a look how we'd import it directly from another database. So if you know that your data already exists on another database somewhere, all you need is an ODBC connection to it. Windows comes with ODB configuration. And we won't get into how to configure this here. If you're unfamiliar with doing this, it might be a question for your computer administrator or your database administrator to set it up. So if you are familiar with doing database queries, this is where you enter the query to bring data over into Control My Icon. So you select the connection, enter your username and password. Now this UTFD code is used to deal with Unicode data. And I'll show you how this is used in a moment. This is Enterprise Manager for SQL Server. This is SQL Server 2012. And you can see I have an insects table with different columns. I have a product table with different columns. You can see some data here. So this database is running on this computer and we'll use ODBC import to pull data from this and bring it into Control My Icon. So I'll bring up the SQL monitor. I need to write a select statement against that database to bring data into Control My Icon. And you need to have aliases for job, batch ID, BD1, BD2, all the way up to BD9. You have to have all of these. Even if there's no data in, say, BD9, instead of putting null here, put just empty quotes, an empty string. Now you could test it by clicking on execute. And if it succeeded, it will show you the data here. This is the data under job, batch ID, BD1, BD2, BD3, BD4, and then blanks here. Now it didn't see any errors, and this is just a query so you could see the data that you would import. When we decide to actually import it, we'll click on the post button, and that'll take this data and import it into Control My Icon. Now if you have an error here in your query, and I'm just gonna type in something like this to mess up the query and we execute it, you'll see the error message here. Invalid column name, this. Didn't like all those X's. So I'll remove it and execute it again. 
Now, if you're unfamiliar with how to write a SQL statement like this against a database, consult with your database administrator. We really can't show you how to do that is this is a separate programming language. Okay, so if the data looks okay, click on post. Now it's asking for a job. We did bring job into it here, but we can override that. We already have one called drinks. So I'm just gonna call this test. Okay, now that the import is complete, we'll go back to setup and we can see that it has been switched to test. And so now if I type in one, it'll pull the data from this imported ODBC data. Okay, now let's take a look at how we skip the import and just do a direct external query to another database. So to do that, we click on external and then click on the external tab. And here we define a query. Back here under setup is where we specify the database we're going to, the username and the password. Then under the external tab, this is the activation query. So when a person types in a number here, it's going to pass it here in the query and return this data. And you can test it here. So you type in a batch ID, click on execute, and it finds this data right here. Let's try this one. Now, if you take a look at this data here, and in particular this field, you can see that it has a non-English character. This is really a special character, and this special character is known as a Unicode character. So sometimes when you read character data like this off a database, it will not translate it properly, and you'll get a funny looking character. So let's try it. Let's type in three here. So if you look here, there's our funny character right there did not come out properly from the database. So if we go back here and do the UTF decode, then do the query again, you can see how it is now correct. Now knowing whether to use the UTF decode check mark really depends on what the character set is of your source data. Control and icon always tries to read Unicode data and to read these extended characters. So if it doesn't work one way, just put a check mark there or remove the check mark and try it again. Now this is the query that we use just for the activation. But if you're going to print barcodes, you also need a query for that. And it's really from the same table, except this time we don't pass a batch ID because we want all the data. And you can execute it here to get an idea of the data you would get back when you go to print barcodes. So since we have this external data selected and this print query, now if we go to print and we go print a one column, this is your data from your external database. So as you can see, there's a lot of ways to get data into Control My Icon and to query external databases. Once you have that set up, then it's real handy to embed that data in your file names and folder names and your IPTC data so you can have a good organized image filing system that is searchable. And that's it. That's how you set up batch data in Control Man Icon. Happy tethering.